Now we're going to do a survey of the programming languages most widely used today. So first off, one of the very most widely used languages today is called C. It was created back in the 1970s, and it's a static language, and it's compiled to machine code. It's often described as a portable assembly language, not because it's, it's literally an assembly language, but because it gives you most of the efficiency advantages of assembly, while still allowing the same code written in C to be compiled for different machines. While code written in C, just like code written in Pidgin, is composed of functions, and those functions consist of statements containing expressions, the C language, unlike Pidgin, gives the programmer much closer control of how exactly memory gets used. Or, to look at it another way, C burdens the programmer with having to manually manage memory. The upshot of this is that C is an appropriate language to use when you need your code to be particularly efficient. It's also a very good choice of language to write an operating system in. The Linux kernel, for instance, is written mostly in C. This code sample down here is the Hello World program written in C. The C language itself is not just one of the most successful languages in the history of programming, it's also one of the most influential. The language called C++, for instance, is basically the C language, but with more stuff added. So we would say that it is a superset of C. It has everything C has, but more. Consequently, a C++ compiler should be able to compile any code written in C However, this isn't entirely the case because C++ is not a perfect superset. Over the years, C and C++ have both evolved on their own paths, and while there's still a very heavy overlap, if you look in the details, there are a few subtle issues that will cause some programs written in C not to compile with a C++ compiler. And there is some code written in C which might successfully compile with a C++ compiler, but the behavior wouldn't be exactly the same as if it were compiled with a proper C compiler. In the end, it's best to think of them as two separate languages. The name C++ is a bit of a joke. In the C language, the operator, which is two plus signs next to each other, is used to increment the value of a variable by one. So if you have a number variable called, say, i, and you see i++, that means take the value of i and increase it by one. So the joke is C++ is like C, but one higher. The primary feature which C++ adds to C is a facility for doing object-oriented programming. C++ can be basically summed up as C with OO. To be clear, it's not impossible to program in an object-oriented style in regular C. It's just that C++ adds features that make programming in that style more convenient. Despite grafting onto C features having to do with object-oriented programming, C++ maintains virtually all of the same efficiency that C itself has. So when you want to write something in an object-oriented style, but you want the efficiency advantages of C, C++ is the primary choice. And in fact, for a long time, it has been the language of choice for applications like, say, Photoshop, or a word processor, or a web browser. And for about the last 15 or 20 years, C++ is the primary choice when you want to write a game. So most commercial games that you buy off the shelf are written in C++. Objective-C was created about the same time as C++, and is largely the same idea. It's taking C and adding to it features that allow you to program in an object-oriented style. Objective-C is mostly known because it's a language pushed by Apple. If you want to develop for the Macintosh or for the iPhone, Objective-C is the language that Apple wants you to use. If it weren't for this push from Apple, Objective-C would probably be just about dead. Whether or not that's because C++ is clearly superior is highly debatable. The Java language was created in the 1990s by the company Sun Microsystems. Like C++ and Objective-C, Java is statically typed, it's heavily biased towards object-oriented programming, and it even also has syntax that very much resembles C. However, unlike C++ and Objective-C, Java is not a superset of C. It has really its own separate semantics. It's really a totally different language. Java was the first widely used language that popularized the idea of compiling to bytecode 
an intermediate form of code and then having that code run by a VM, a, a virtual machine, which is basically a kind of interpreter. And like most languages that use an interpreter, Java does garbage collection. The virtual machine for Java, made by Sun itself, is called the Java Virtual Machine, and it's by far the most popular, though there are some others out there, like there's one made by IBM, for instance. By the late 90s, Java had become the most popular language in just a few short years, so Microsoft decided that they need something like Java, and they created a language called C Sharp. At its core, C Sharp is pretty much a verbatim rip of Java, but if you look into the details, there's plenty of differences. And in fact, many people will argue that C Sharp fixed many things that are wrong with Java. Microsoft makes the primary VM for C Sharp, which it calls the CLR, the Common Language Runtime, which unlike the Java Virtual Machine, only runs on Windows. However, there is now another VM for C Sharp called Mono, which is free open source software and will run not just on Windows, but also on Mac and Linux.